Only worked for the NSA, Naval Intelligence. Uh, he's written for some of the biggest publications in the country, Washington Post, you name it. He's a contributor to RT. He's a real patriot. His info is always borne out to be very accurate. He told me where he got this new information, and, and he, it's, it's verified and confirmed. It's just that there's been a – I don't, don't want to go any further because they keep clamping down every time they learn of a new place people are getting information. But we're going to stop right there, and Wayne can say as much as he wants. But this is all public source and verified in his three articles. But you need to read all three parts. Uh, the story of Obama all in the company, part one, part two, and part three, at Infowars.com or WadeMadsonReport.com. And, again, his site is weighed down. Uh, so if you can't get it there, Infowars.com. And get it out to everyone you know. Because I have separately researched this in depth, making the Obama deception and fall of the republic. And a lot of this was already public, but a lot of it is new and just completes the image of what we've got. Now, before we go back to Wayne, I want to show people a few new stories that came out this week. Here's Politico. Don't look, birthers. It's Obama's passport. As if his passport means something. Now, this came out on the heels of them shredding and destroying his mother's passport which would be stamped where he was at what time. When he was born, the evidence shows in Kenya, but we know he gave up his citizenship and became Barry Sitaro, like Anakin Skywalker became Darth Vader. He became Barry Sitaro and gave up his U.S. citizenship. That is confirmed. That's mainstream news. Okay, and they try to abscond that evidence by only focusing on Kenya. And I'm not bashing those that do. It's just this is smoking gun. Now, here it is. Oops, Obama mama, passport destroyed. State Department claims records gone uh, for Stanley Ann Dunham prior to 1968, uh, after, uh, around the time that uh, old Barack Obama was born in 1961. Continuing, White House offers a glimpse of President Obama's passport documents, shows birthplaces of Hawaii. So they, they're, they're desperate. They won't put out the original passport, just a receipt of it, okay, just, just a slip. Uh, not the real passport, and now they're doing this at the same time they destroyed her passport. Very, very uh, suspicious. So I wanted to just point out they've been involved in a cover-up. Wayne Madsen, go over your groundbreaking report, the new stuff you've uh, discovered, and other things you haven't put uh, in Part 1 or Part 2 or Part 3. You've got the floor. Wayne Madsen, go over it. Well, I started this investigation by looking at the company that President Obama went to work for after he graduated from Columbia, and it was Business International Corporation, and that was uh, a company that had close ties to the CIA. They used some of their quote-unquote journalists uh, as CIA cover uh, officers overseas. Uh, now, in his book, uh, Obama says, oh, I went to work for a company in Manhattan after I graduated from Colum uh, Columbia, but it was the company, the CIA. It wasn't a company, and and uh, he was very uh, disingenuous with talk, uh, about talking about that. This was a company that had access to some of the biggest, uh, most powerful people in the world, including uh, Soviet Premier Alexei Kosygin, Generalissimo Franco of, of Spain. Uh, and it, obviously this company did outreach to a lot of leftist uh, leaders in places like Africa uh, and Asia and other, other parts of the world, including Latin America. And, and then I started looking at, of course, uh, his mother and her time uh, in Indonesia especially, but also Pakistan. It turns out she was working not only for the Ford Foundation on microfinancing projects, and I, I, I have information that uh, uh, states that one of the CIA economic officers at the U.S. Embassy in Jakarta worked on the same exact project while she was there, financing, um, uh, microfinancing of, of, for, for these farmers and artisans in central Java. Now, she, uh, Obama, uh, 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 Ann Dunham Satoro takes her son at seven years old into Indonesia following the CIA inspired coup. Uh, two years later, uh, Lolo Satoro, his stepfather, was called back by General Suharto from uh, Hawaii, where he met uh, Obama's mother in 65, but prior to the CIA coup. Uh, and he went to work uh, for uh, the Suharto's army. Now, that they killed an estimated up to one million uh, uh, Indonesian citizens, a lot of ethnic Chinese, and also uh, reported members of the uh, Indonesian Communist Party. 
So this is the environment she takes, seven-year-old Barack Obama. Uh, I mean, what, who in their right mind would do that unless you were, you know, being assigned uh, to work for the agency uh, in those days? I also looked at Barack Obama Sr. Now, he was airlifted. It was called Project Afri Airlift Africa. It was funded by uh, a $100,000 grant from the Joseph P. Kennedy Foundation. But that's because Tom Amboya, who was a Kenyan nationalist leader, pro-U.S., tied in with the CIA, decided he didn't want to take State Department money because that would look too suspicious. So it looks like they laundered some of this money through the, through the Joseph P. Kennedy Foundation in 1960. Now, remember, John Kennedy's running for president then, uh, so that's building up his, his uh, national security credentials, helping out uh, the agency. And the reason for bringing these 230 students from Kenya, Tanganyika, and other soon-to-be independent British colonies in eastern and southern Africa was to compete with the Soviets and Chinese who were training their own leaders in these, in these uh, newly independent nations, and it was clearly to uh, uh, gain influence with these new governments. So just to interrupt briefly, the bottom line historically is the British are the masters of this, but other governments have done it. That's why you had to be American-born to be president uh, in the Constitution, because at the time our country was being founded, they had problems with the Austrians sending their people uh, into other European countries during the democratic revolutions that were developing to try to put their people into power there. And so this story of intelligence agencies pre-positioning people to put them into political power so they control nations uh, is extremely old. And we also know that Kenya in the 40s and 50s into the 60s was the admitted declassified global model of covert uh, takeovers and was the main base of operations aside from South Africa uh, and Rhodesia for control of the African uh, continent. Well, right. And, and we have to remember the same year, the same year that Barack Obama Sr. was brought over in the CIA Airlift Africa project is the same year that uh, the Soviet Union opened the Patrice Lumumba University in Moscow for, this, for the sole purpose of training people from uh, these third world nations, uh, these newly independent countries. So this petition, we of course didn't have a Patrice Lumumba University, but we ferreted these students among various universities around the United States, and Barack Obama Sr. was the first uh, African student to attend the University of Hawaii, and he meets Obama's mother in where? A Chinese class. So okay, your, 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 your phone was cutting out a bit. Uh, he meets his mother. Again, Barack Obama Sr. meets meets Mama, and of course her daddy you're going to get into has connections to the agency. He meets her where? In a, in a Russian language class at the University of Hawaii. Uh, now, this is the height of the Cold War. Uh, the only people who would be taking Russian in a place like Hawaii, which was like a military, I mean, the military was all over Hawaii, the Navy, the Army, the Air Force, would be obviously people who were involved in some uh, way, shape, or form with intelligence, or, 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 or were re being recruited into intelligence. And um, now, um, uh, Stanley Armour Dunham, uh, the, the grandfather, there's a photo of him welcoming Barack Obama Sr. to, to the airport in Hawaii. Uh, now, we were told that they met for the first time at the Russian language class. It's clear now, this furniture salesman, we were told, uh, Stanley Armour Dunham, grandfather, it was in the furniture business. It seems like he was in much, much more than just uh, selling furniture. Incredible. And then, of course, you have her then being projected into the big foundation under Tim Geithner's father. I mean, just on every side, you've got all these connections in the report. And then he's got a fake name. He's changing his name. We don't know where he's born. Uh, he comes from nowhere to become president. I mean, it just I mean, the evidence is overwhelming. Well, and then we have then we have a curious case of uh, his grandmother, uh, Madeline Dunham, who uh, who died uh, right uh, two days before Obama was elected president in two thousand and eight. Uh, the Obama campaign apparently didn't want her giving any interviews to the press. Maybe they were afraid she'd be like uh, Newt Gingrich's mother with the Katie Couric interview and slip up and say something that would have em embarrassed them. But she was one of the first female vice presidents at the Bank of Hawaii, and now. Lo and behold, we find out that that bank was used by the CIA front company in, in Honolulu to make payments to these dictators in Asia, like Suharto, 
uh, and uh, Marcos in the Philippines, and Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek in Taiwan, and the uh, Park Chung-hee in South Korea, and the Liberal Democrats in Japan, who violated their own constitution by secretly allowing the U.S. to station nuclear weapons in Japan during the Cold War. So, so this was the payoff. Uh, this was the CIA payoff uh, network to these uh, uh, U.S.-sponsored dictators in Asia. We're going to go to break and come back and keep going through your article that really puts all the pieces together that clearly this guy's an intelligence operative. We'll look at once he's in college, how he's sent to Pakistan, clearly uh, in all sorts of uh, secret ops. I mean, this is extremely clear. But also, if you really study deep intelligence... It's normally a family affair because then the whole family's connected. There's the peer pressure of the family. You can never leave. And so we see that pattern throughout history at the highest levels of intelligence. We'll continue to look at uh, Barry Sitaro, a.k.a. Barack Obama, uh, the president, on the other side of this quick break with Wayne Madsen. You've got to read the report. Look at the photos. It is extremely damning. It's all at Infowars.com and WadeMadsenReport.com. Is your debt problem a ticking time bomb? Thanks to a new financial consumer relief program designed in response to the economic crisis facing millions of Americans, you don't have to wait until it's too late to defuse your debt. If you owe $10,000 or more in credit card bills and are struggling to make minimum payments, get ready to take down this number for free information that could potentially save your home, the lifestyle you're accustomed to, and your family's financial well-being. But don't wait. Studies show that if most debt problems are confronted directly, beneficial settlements, manageable monthly payments and quick restoration of credit are more easily attained, potentially saving you thousands of dollars in interest charges, fees, and unpaid debt. Don't procrastinate. Call now for your free information and begin putting your economic house in order today. To qualify for this program, you must have $10,000 in credit card debt. Call the American Debt Associates at 800-876-2966. 800-876-2966. Again, 800-876-2966. There are many types of storable foods, but how about a superfood that contains every nutrient that the human body needs for survival? 50% protein, 300 milligrams of potassium per ounce, and calcium and magnesium for your heart and bones, with many more nutrients found in this incredible food source that the government does not want you to have. This product is available in powder, seeds, and oil, and is shipped free to your door in the U.S. This product is illegal to grow in the U.S., but is legal to import. Don't waste time thinking about storing food. Plan ahead and prepare for yourself and your family now and be in control of your destiny. You can save and invest your money, but in the end, food will be your greatest asset. Remember what the Word of God says in Ezekiel 719. Call 908-691-2608 and see what the powder, seeds, and oil can do for you. Remember, food will be your greatest asset. Call 908-691-2608. This product does not contain THC. Call 908-691-2608 today. They helped to create a new world order. We are part of a new world order. A new world order based upon collective action. Invisible Empire is a damning indictment of the globalists through their own words and documents. The new world order really is a tool for addressing a new world of possibilities. It means all the world under their control. The United Nations would take over America. The Trilateral Commission would control the world. Invisible Empire chronicles how men of power and influence have worked in stealth for centuries to establish an oppressive world government. I believe, first of all, that we now need nothing short of a world constitution for the global financial system. Global governance with the establishment of the G20. So